Hello and welcome to Tokyo Games Match Preview. West Ham United against Everton. Back to Premier League duty for the Hammers after a 2-1 defeat in Greece. Gonzo, can you kick us off with your thoughts on the Toffees, please? Well, they've had... I don't know if the change of ownership's actually happened. They certainly sale agreed. Um, I know that much. So it's not gone... Through, I take it from your expression, it's not gone through. No. Um, I think... Uh, well, I mean, firstly, they've... It's a difficult one for Everton because obviously Bill Kenwright has has just passed away, and I think reading between the lines, he's done an awful lot for Everton, done an awful lot for that city, but he's had a lot of stick in the last little while. So it's, I imagine it's probably you know a, a bit difficult, really. Um, so I don't want to say too much ab about it, really. Um, but uh, the ownership, I, I look, they're a team in transit, they're a club in transition, and they need to be in transition really, because uh, it's been a pretty crappy last few years for them. Um, Sean Dyche came in to do a bit of firefighting, steadied the ship. He just about kept him up, didn't he? And he looks like, I think there's a combination of it. I do think he's made them a bit better. I think there's been some decent signings there, which will work out for them. But I also think maybe this is the first season that Everton can breathe a proper sigh of relief in the last however long Everton fans be able to tell us whatever five six whatever seasons it's been because they ploughed in so much money and I think they probably expected greater things it, it's not happened but I think the the teams down at the bottom are so crap and it's not just the promoted teams you could probably throw Bournemouth in there as well at the moment well, Everton thrash Bournemouth didn't we? three or four nil or, or something like that relatively recently so I think that's going to allow them to breathe a little bit easier this season, Gio. I think probably whatever we're going into, going into November last few seasons, Everton possibly might have thought this was their year to go down. They don't have to worry about it this year because um, I think they're significantly better than the rest. So a, a sigh of relief for them, I think. Well, they might have to worry about it. They Premier League get their way in terms of a point sanction. I mean, very quickly, they could end up in that relegation battle. Uh, I've tried to keep my eye on this as much as possible because, well, it's quite big news in the Premier League and it's quite a, a big thing. And I'm just a bit like... There's something wild going on that we don't know about behind the scenes. Um, or, I don't know, maybe they're make, looking to make an example of Everton. I'm not quite sure what it is. I feel like if I was an Everton fan, I think I'd feel a little bit like there's a bit of a, a witch hunt going on against my club mm. from the Premier League a little bit here. Especially, I know Man City is more of a UEFA thing, but you look at they've got 115 charges and that's taken forever. This Everton thing came to light in March, I think it was. They got referred to the independent committee and the Premier League were recommending that they get a points deduction. And that's, that's a serious recommendation for the Premier League. I think they're setting a precedent here. They will hang on a minute. From now on, if any club breaks the, the, the rules that you've got in place financially, this has got to be... The punishment is it's a, it's a tricky one. Um, I try and stay away from the, sort of the off the pitch stuff of football clubs. Come, I don't always know, but this has got me. I mean, you're right. Seven 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 have agreed a, a purchase of Everton. It's not gone through yet, but the purchase doesn't rely or it's not impacted if Everton get a point deduction because they're aware of the sanctions. But I think this has been taken into consideration when agreeing a price. There's a case of here, you buy them, and if we get done, you've already got a bit of a discount. And if you don't get done, you've got a, a, a bargain, if you like, kind of thing. But they're lending the club money, I believe. Uh, this is where I might get this one wrong. I think they've lent Everton £40 million for a second time now. So they're now lending the club money to keep them afloat while they're trying to purchase the club. And should the sale not go through, it's going to turn into equity anyway. But, yeah, as, as it stands, the Premier League are trying to give them a points deduction, which could be up to and including 12 points. We'd obviously then put Everton wow. on minus five as we speak. Um, well, they would go down then, wouldn't they? Let's be fair. You'd imagine so, but given how yeah. poor that some of the teams are, I, I think they might actually get out of it. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Luton are that bad. And funnily enough, Luton beat Everton, but Luton are that terrible. And I don't think much of Sheffield United and Bournemouth is the other one as well. That They might have a smither of a chance, but it would obviously put them in serious danger of getting relegated. I mean, what do you make of the points reduction thing? I, I don't like financial fair play at all, any of it. I think it was brought in, um, it's a shroud, it's a, it's a disguise, it's, it's fake reasoning for bringing it in. And people use Portsmouth and Leeds as an example. So they say they're going to bring it in so as, so as clubs can't bankrupt themselves. 
really they brought it in so as nobody can spend lots and challenge. The reason it's enforced is they want to give Manchester United and the likes of them every chance. They don't like it. No one. The only people that really wanted Leicester to win the league were clubs of our size and Leicester. The big boys didn't want it. No, nobody really wanted it. So I think if that if you're going to be true to your reasoning for doing it, which is I want to I want to stop a club going into liquidation, you have to ask yourself: Are Everton at risk of going into liquidation? No, they're not. That they're absolutely not. They might be struggling financially at the moment, but the whole world knows that somebody would take Everton over, and and they would they would pay for that. They'd pay off the debt. And as long as Everton was run properly, because I think the geezer's name was Mashiri, he'd done a terrible, terrible job. If they're run properly, any Premier League team can be completely solvent. There's no reason. It's very, very easy to someone to go in there and do it. What might push Everton over the edge, and the great irony is the very rules that are put in place to stop a club going into trouble may well put the club into trouble. And I think at that point, these people have probably got something to answer for really do. Should Everton have broken the rules? No. But I'll tell you what, the Everton fans aren't at at fault for that at all. They're really not. I don't like these rules. I'd like to see the rules scrapped and just go off topic slightly onto Newcastle. Gio, the, the, one of the reasons Newcastle can't spend, and we, we often you know, we often praise Newcastle, they've not spent as much as we thought. Well, they're probably not allowed to. That's the thing. And it, it forces, so uh, Newcastle are probably going to have to do something quite creative to try and well, generate... Well, they've announced that. You, you haven't seen their new shirt sponsor, have they? I, I've, I've, no, I've not, no. Oh, they're now sponsored by Saudi. This is exactly what happens. And it's exactly the type of stuff that Manchester City are under investigation for, exactly this sort of stuff as well. The difference is Manchester City have probably got 150 charges, but they've probably got 150 lawyers as well, which is they're going to tie this up in legal red tape for a long, long time. Look, I've got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not... I don't, I'm not thrilled at all these takeovers and all these nation states buying football clubs. I'm really not. But I also don't I don't think that these clubs like Liverpool and like Manchester United should be so precious that, that they'll dare not challenge them. I think it's a load of nonsense and I think it would be out of order if Everton got docked points. Yeah, I mean, as much as I understand Everton have run up losses, you're allowed to lose £105 million over a three-year period. And regardless of which three-year period you take over the last five years of Everton, it comes to over... 105 million. I think in the last three years, it's about 400 million they've lost or something. And the reason the FA, the Premier, sorry, the reason the Premier League have got involved is to do with the tax issue in regards to the stadium. That's my understanding of it. But even that rule just demonstrates that you can lose 105 million, and and then and the, even then they won't. That's within the rule, so it's to protect the futures of the club. But you allowed to lose 105 million as if it's yeah. loose change. Yeah. Um, yeah. And lost 105 million, they'd be in liquidation. Yeah. Yeah. So, but as long as you lo- only lose 105 million, we, we won't look at you, kind of thing. Um, Everton do deny these allegations and they're, they're quite strong. So, no, we, we've played ball, we've done nothing wrong here. And I think part of the problem is this whole grey area around COVID because obviously this comes into the COVID period where they relaxed the, the regulations a little bit because obviously the income of these clubs was gone um, because there was no fans attending etc so they relaxed the regulations a little bit so I think this is where it's causing a little bit of a bother but I, I hope there isn't a, a point sanction um, I would be surprised if there is I, I expect them to, again more irony so because you've lost loads of money we're going to fine you we're going to take more money from you and um, so I'd imagine they'll get a fine. They might get a suspended points deduction or something. But if they do get a points deduction, I think it should be the start of next season because well, you're just going to kick a club into the championship midway through the season. And I think that's a little bit... Um... It's like punishing a hungry bloke by taking his food away. Um... <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure we'll go with that. But anyway... Um... No, assuming there's no points deduction, you think Everton will be safe, yes? No relegation. Yeah, 100%, yes. I, I agree as well. I actually think they've been unlucky. I've watched them a few times this season. They were crap against Sheffield United. When I watched them play Sheffield United, I thought there's two sides getting relegated. They, they were just both as bad as each other. But there's been quite a few games I've thought Everton were a little bit unlucky and they got massively mugged off last weekend in Merseyside Derby. I mean, that was just ridiculous. Canati not getting sent off was just... Ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. There's, there's no wonder if Everton felt everything in the Premier League's against them at the minute with the financial <laughs> thing, and then then that happens in the Premier League. Hard to blame them. Last question about Everton, as always, please, Meyer. 
Yeah, just before I, I do, just I, I don't yeah. watch Everton much at all. I did. I watched um, quite a lot of that game. Um, Ashley Young was on a card, and then he kicked the ball away. And I remember watching it, thinking he, he needs to go. Dyche needs to get him off. I thought he'd gone. So um, I know there was a lot of a lot of bleating about, um, you know, they were hard done by Andy Ashley. I think it was completely his fault and completely avoidable, by the way. But the the, um, the Canate one, abs- absolutely. And um, but I thought they actually contested that game really well up yeah. to a point. I really did actually. I thought they I thought they were they were good. Um, uh, players that I admire. I think I, I don't. I got a feeling Anana's coming back into it. I think they might be, you know, beginning of seeing the player that they possibly thought they'd signed. Again, I wouldn't overly blame um, blame him for that. Um, Calvert Lewin is is back and fit, unless something's happened in the last couple of days I don't know about. He's he's really got a jump on him. Uh, that kid, he really has, and and he's gonna. Um, I think he's going to cause our, our central defence uh, some some real problems. I think Tarkowski was was an excellent signing, has to be said. And I also think somebody that um, I don't even, I don't even know that they had him until I, I watched a couple of their game, uh, watched some highlights, and obviously watched uh, some bits and pieces. I don't even know that they'd signed Harrison. So that's the kid from Leeds, isn't it? Who scored the hat trick against us? Yeah, um, I, I think he's a good player, and uh, I think he, he'll. It'll do really, really well for them. And also, I think if they can get it going, uh, I don't know if McNeil's featured much for them this season, but if he has, OK, so if they can get maybe a supply line onto um, uh, Calvert-Lewin, who, who's, who's, I mean, he's, he's done well because he's pushed that, that new striker they got. He seems to have pushed him down to the bench. So they've got options there now. I haven't really felt for a while that Everton could score goals. I feel now Everton can score goals. Yeah, they've been diced up a little bit, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It feels very quickly, it feels like it's got the resemblance of a Sean Dyche team, although he's not even been there for a full calendar year yet, but he's already sort of imposed his style and his players on them. And I think they'll be okay this season. I think Harrison's a very good signing. I think McNeil's a very good signing as well. I think Beto is uh, a lot of West Ham fans, I say a lot, there's a handful of West Ham, which is enough, was suggesting that that is someone we should be going after because of his ability, similar his characteristics, similar to Antonio, and I didn't see him, so I couldn't really, I didn't really have an opinion based on their opinion. But having seen him at Everton, I can completely get what they're saying actually in in regards to how he plays and how that how we play with Mikel Antonio up there. The strong in the middle, I think James Garner has been quite a decent signing. Um, I'm a big fan of Patterson, but again, I'm biased for that. He might play on Sunday, actually, because of Young's red card uh, last weekend. And I still think Pickford's a top keeper that gets way too much criticism. I think maybe it's because he's got small arms. I don't know. I just think he gets far too much stick. And I think he's by far England's best goalkeeper, in my opinion. I I really, really do believe that. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Enough about Everton. Bit of a different conversation around the opposition this week because of the off the field Mm. stuff. It's very topical at the minute. And time to do West Ham. Our team news is that we've got no Emerson. Emerson is suspended for this one after picking up five yellow cards in the Premier League. Alvarez and Paqueta remain on four. So should either of those pick up a booking in this game, they will miss next weekend's game against Brentford. Babianski was ill and missed the game against Olympiakos and Soufal did not travel to Greece. But David Moyes saying that he was unavailable. So Soufal remains a doubt for this one and Emerson is definitely out. So we could have two changes at fullback and hopefully maybe one or two more elsewhere in the team. Now, myself and Gonzo are going to discuss the team we want to see, not the team that we think David Moyes will do. I can't stress that enough. Don't like stressed it. But we did the preview. We want to see Mubam up front. And straight away, someone said, do you really think he's going to play Mubam up front? No, we don't. We, we weren't saying we did. We just want to see Mubam up front. That's all. So the following 11, so you're away to hear is what we want to see, not what we think Moyes will do. We'll cover that in another video. Um, before we do... Just want to point you in the direction of the Christmas jumper. I know you're thinking, I'm on Geo's even November. Why are you wearing it? Because, well, we need to promote it, just be told. It's a pre sale item. You go until the 10th of November to order it and get five pounds off. If you order it before the 10th of November, you'll save a fiver. Simple as that. Link is in the description. You can go to hammerstratstore.com for slash Christmas, which is good to the website. It's quite easy to find. It's in pick of the week. It's in the Christmas bit on the menu bar, but this is our design this year. You can still purchase last year's design if you like that, and it's a better quality garment this year. So it's five pounds more than it was last year, but we've upgraded. It's got more cheaper. cotton, hasn't it, Gio? Got, it has got more and cotton. a bit more Christmas spirit. This one, I think, as well. No, it's got the same Christmas spirit. Right. There was plenty of it last year, All right. and there's plenty of it this year as well. So. Excellent. There you go. Anyway, if you want your Hammerstein Christmas jumper, go grab one. Right, Gonzo, let's talk about the team we would like to see in goal. Alphonse Ariola. 
Yeah, it might be our only choice. The other one might not be available anyway. So, All right, then. Um, well, if Fabianski was available, what would you like? Ariola. Oh, well, so would I, regardless of um, Fabianski being available or not. Now, your defence, talk me through it. You've got one change at least, but maybe you want to see two or three changes. Well, I'd see plenty of changes from the Olympiacos game. I'm going to go with Souffal because I just don't know. So that's just, I'm going to assume that he is fit. Probably more interesting if I assume that he's not. So I'll, I'll go with a Souffal, um, a Kurt Zuma, and a Naifa Gerd. I'm actually going to go with Aaron Cresswell at left back. I've, I've looked into the eyes of the beast and I uh, don't like what I see with Tilo Kera playing at fullback. And I think so. You've got a choice of two players that basically haven't played really this season in Ben Johnson and Cresswell. I'm aware both have had some minuscule minutes, but um, so I think with that in mind, I'd probably rather go with Aaron Cresswell, actually. It's a difficult one because the game against Olympiacos would have given us an opportunity to play a left back ahead of this game to get them minutes under the belt. And I think we possibly have seen the player that's going to play at left back play against Olympiacos, albeit it's not the one me and you want to see. But again, he kind of had to play Emerson because he suspended for Sunday. So, yeah. it, was a, so it was a bit of a, a difficult situation there. My back four, I'd like to see Fowler at right back. I agree with Creswell at left back. I think he's a left back, whereas the other options are are, are not. In centre back, I've gone Zuma and Kerrer. Um um, Aguero didn't have a bad game against Villa. Zuma was worse. Yeah. But regardless of whether to play Beto or Calvert Lewin, it's a physical striker. It's somebody that's going to be good in the air. And I think that will suit Zuma more than Aguero anyway. I, I just think our defence needs to change. We're conceding too many goals. I've, I've not been convinced by the Zuma Aguero partnership well, all season, Trippy. Well, maybe I have one or two decent games between them, but it's not very many. Even when we win, we're still conceding goals. So defensively, there's a problem here. And we can't get any more defensive with the way that we line up ahead of the defence in regards to midfield. we've all, That's with three decent enough players in front of him. One of the best defensive wingers in the Premier League in Jamie Bowen as well. So we can't get any more defensive away from the defence. So to mm. tighten up, it's going to have to be personnel changes. Now, I know Manfred Panos is obviously the obvious one. I don't know. I've not seen... I didn't see him at Stuttgart. I've not watched him play for Greece. I've seen him play for West Ham a handful of times. He's done okay, but he's not done anything that shows me that he's that good. So he, he should be that good. We've spent that much money on him. But I want to see Kerr in there because I think Kerr is a really good centre-back. So that's why I'm going with him. Now, this is where us and Moyes is going to differ massively because when we do the prediction show, I think we'll be including Kerr. It just won't be at centre-back. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so that's how myself and Gonzo would like to line up at the back. If Soufal was missing, what would you do? I don't think he would have much choice. I think it, I, I may even... The, the trouble is we're playing Johnson and Cresswell, which is, is fitness. It is yeah. fitness. Um, so I probably would play Kera there. Um, he's going to be slightly better at right back than left back, well, because he's right footed. Um, I, I just feel two players that are not match fit in Cresswell and, and Johnson are probably going to be a problem. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not ideal either way. It really isn't. Yeah, I have to agree. It kind of has to be Kerry, really, doesn't it? But mm. I'm not convinced by him. I, I, I don't think he was that bad against Olympiacos in comparison to some of his, his colleagues, but I thought his positioning was dreadful, especially sure. in the first half. I thought he was really bad. 10, 15 yards further forward than he should be. And if they have McNeil or Harrison, whoever it is, they play out on the left. I think they'd really benefit from Kerr's positioning. Tough, tough one. Let's just hope two fouls available. Otherwise, we could find ourselves struggling in the fullback positions very, very quickly on Sunday. Now, moving into midfield, I think it's fair to assume you'd like to see Alvarez and Ward-Prowse in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll play those two in there for sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it is... It is interesting, though, what to do with with this one. Uh, I mean, I think what the game against Olympiacos has shown us is not a whole load of depth there to throw people in. To, basically, you can't punish it. You can't really punish too many people for uh, the Aston Villa loss because it's just not. And I don't know why, because we spent a fortune, but it's just not a you load do of know players. Why. I do know why. What? Well, you always say you don't know why. Like, there's no alternatives despite spending so much money. Yeah, I, I, well, I don't do know, know why. why. Well, I don't know, well, I don't know why David Moyes has, has not bought more players that he's willing to use off the bench. 
um and that uh, you know because they're just not ready like this this is the point he doesn't he doesn't use them he, he picks the same players as substitutes in every single game so when we get to this point we we have a problem and the problem well, we've just discussed some some of the problems at fullbacks there they, they're just not ready because it's so far and Emerson I, I know, this might be a bad example but there are a couple of games possibly back at Topola possibly Lincoln City I'd have to go back and watch the previews again which I'm not going to do but I, I suggested that Jack Dan Chester's at least once at full back at right back this season and, and this but when you don't test these things out when you have the chance, when you get to a point when you're desperate, where you have injuries or you have suspension, you just don't know. And it doesn't have to be Dan Chester's. It could be anyone. I just use that as an example. If you're not going to use these players then, then number one, they're not motivated. And number two, they're not fit. And and when that happens and you chuck them all in, you basically do you basically do a, a Sam Allardyce. Um, my, my, was it against Nottingham Forest? Maybe it was. Where yeah, you basically chuck everyone in at the same time. And, and they, they sink. And this is the problem. And because of that, there's no... So we don't have Cornet with his tail up ready to play. I think we've got a problem at left wing for this game uh, as well. Who Who's there? Well, you can't play Cornet. You can't play Ben Rama. He's a sh- shadow. It's not even... It's like sh- essence of shadow of Ben Rama, if you want. Essence of Ben Rama is the wrong thing. Um, You, you know, it's... Ben. This is... It's <laughs> called Ben. He's he lost is, his Rama. He Absolutely, he's definitely lost his Rama. There's uh, no doubt about it. So hey, I think ben. this is this is the problem. You know that he's really so, but something has to give and something has to be shaken up a bit. And I'm not sure just swapping Mohamed Kadus for Thomas Suchek is going to get going to do it. It has. To, I feel there has to be something else as well. Well, what's the something else then? What are you wanting to see in the middle apart from? Oh, well, I think I'd rather see Pekatar in the middle. Yeah, I agree with that. It's it's. I wouldn't say the experiment's over. He's done okay out on the left, but. Yeah. Well, I know he, you have he, concerns about it defensively as well. Yeah, um, I don't think you know. I'm not that bothered about. But if he plays Patterson, then sure he will get forward. I think there's a small chance Dice might play Garner there actually, but I, I wouldn't be too concerned about him coming forward. It's not like the threat Kieran Chip here present, proposed sure. or anything. So defensively, I don't actually have concerns over Paquetta playing on the left. It's more about getting the best out of Paquetta. You know, I think statistically he's probably created more chances and got more assists from the left hand side, but I would argue that he's creating those chances by overloading the middle of the pitch. He's not supplying from the left wing. It's not like he's cutting down. He's not dribbling past the right back and swinging in across. He's not playing like a left wing. He comes in field, and that's when he's getting on the ball. He was on the pitch. What he did in 10 minutes against Olympiacos, his goal from a central position, he, he was drifting out to the right-hand side and swinging crosses. And I want that I want that Lucas Paqueta on Sunday, please. And I say in the number 10 role, free role, don't even give him a position. Just name your 4-4-1 kind of formation and players, and Paqueta is the 11th man who doesn't actually have a position He's an intelligent player. Let him go where he wants. Let him read the game. Let him double up with Jared Bowen on the left back if he wants to. Let him pick and choose. Um, so, yeah, let's get Paquetta off the left-hand side. I agree with that. Yeah, well, and also you've got the thing is that there's no reason to plan. That partnership is gone, and it's an excellent partnership with Emerson uh, and, and him there. It's gone because Emerson's got a suspension. So you might as well – the, the left side needs – attention anyway so you just might as well move him and put him into the position of maximum impact and that's going to be in the middle of the pitch where he can that final pass that final ball I mean is anyone in any doubt that boy can shoot right let's see a little bit more of it you know boy on the right not necessarily no oh. could do so I don't, I, I don't want to see Caduce on the left I, I, I suspect and I've got a very little bit of evidence I suspect he's not as good there so I want to see Caduce on the right Okay. So I think I would play Bowen up front in this one. And then to complete your 11, who would you like to see out on the left? I've got to be realistic. I, I understand this is what David Moyes, this is not what David Moyes would do, but I have to have a certain amount of realism. If it were, because this is never going to happen, but if it were me on this Here one, <laughs> if it were me, I, I would, I'd probably go and get Kadua. Um from the youth. I, I, would, I would go and get somebody, I would give someone else a chance and say, look, this is that utter crap what we've seen in the last two games one of you boys is getting a, one of you boys is getting a chance here um or the other thing would obviously be t- i think what's more likely and i don't think he'll do this but I, perhaps antonio on the left wing it, it's a difficult one really isn't it i think 
I think I was all ready to say I'll have Caduce on the right, bowing up front and Cornet on the left. I, I was ready to just say, you know what, it's time we give this lad a chance. He, he's been here a year and a half now and he's not even had three appearances in a row yet. Um, yeah. And I know he wasn't particularly great in terms of what he contributed to the game, but I thought his attitude was all right when he came on against Olympiacos. And there's only one player in the squad that I think would be justified to not want to play for David Moyes. I think it would be Maxwell Cornet. But actually, when he came on, he, he was putting an effort, which is, was severely lacking before we started making the sub. He, he, I bet you, uh, he probably hasn't. But I wouldn't be surprised if we covered more ground than flipping Pablo Fernandes did. He was only on the pitch for sure. half the length of time. But... I just don't know we can play without Antonio. I, I just I just don't see a way that we 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 win without him. Could do something right and bowing up front should do well. I, I just don't think we we we'd manage it. I, I just don't think we would. So I'm going to go bowing on the right, Antonio up front, and could do some left. I don't like could do some left. Um, so he is shoe sh- sh- like sh- it is square peg and round hole out there. But the round pegs ain't working in Ben Ram and in Fanal. I don't want them. I don't want them in the team. So Caduceus is a little bit unfortunate, perhaps. But I, I'd, I'd go Antonio just because a, the, a David Moyes team without Antonio doesn't work. We've discovered that many times and we've got a reminder of it on Thursday. And I thought he, he gave away a bit too many fouls and it was a bit frustrating. He gave them ample opportunity to time waste on Thursday night, did Antonio. But I thought he impacted the game relatively well. I thought he gave their defence something to worry about. He was crap against Aston Villa. However, I don't think we can sit here on the preview and say he's always crap after the international break, but discard that bit of evidence yeah, yeah. that it was after the international break. I think you have, we have to keep that bit of context. So I'd give him this game against Everton. But we very much that last chance saloon. But you don't perform here. You're out the team for Brentford next week kind of thing. Um, so anyway, that's for myself and Gonzo with Why Not. Gonzo is feeling like a bit of an important game. It is. It is. It's because it was a really decent start to the season. And you, if you lose against Aston Villa, you lose in the you lose in the cup um, and the Europa uh, League. Obviously, I mean there. Uh, we'll get to the cup in a second. And and then if you were to not do well against Everton, and then it's, it's Arsenal after Everton, right? We've got yeah, that right. Correct. That you get this, you get this wrong, and you lose four games on the trot. It goes from a good start to the season. So to to, to, to to crappy rubbish really I've got to say and um and well I will say what about us what I would say about Everton that there's no risk of anything you know there really isn't those bottom three teams and and well say let's probably say bottom four teams maybe a pretty pants so we haven't got anything to worry about there but what we could do um we could find ourselves standing on the sidelines watching everybody else um play well this this season I don't just mean play well I, I mean accrue points and stuff like that and and maybe the, the, the slide has to be arrested now and it's not it's not too late but far from it but so what's after arsenal burnley have we got that right brentford away Brent, sorry brentford, uh, uh, same thing begins with b um you you don't want to be going into that one having not one in four so um yeah i think it is an important game is it season defining no it's not but i think that the crowd and the, the team Need need the morale lift of this one, and I think probably David Moyes does as well. I was going to issue the thing. This is a bit yo-yo. This job, and, and it and it would it would be. You know, he'd, he'd have every right for thinking that. But uh, that was you know that that was on him. That Olympiacos game, it was absolutely on him. That so he's he's going to have to come out with something. And what he has to do now, and this is what is most important for all of it. He alluded to it in his press conference, Geo. Lee, he said the word leeway, and the leeway is is very much the leeway was created by the first two wins in the group. It's given me a bit of leeway to rest the players. Is is pretty much what he was saying. Okay, that's fine. You can rest the players. You can do that, and you can. It's a bad term, but I'm going to say it. And please don't pick me up on it too much. I'm just struggling for it another way. You can throw the game if you want, right? And but if you're going to do that in the hope of winning against Everton. You better bloody make sure you win against Everton. Yeah. And and this is where the pressure's on him. I completely agree. He has to win. Um, he he got asked before the game as well, oh, why you've made so many changes? You've given them a chance. No, I'm resting players. All right. Yeah. Well, you, we better see the, the 
the positives of best team players, which is we better see you win on, on Sunday against Everton. And if we win on Sunday, he'll feel justified. Moyes will think, I was right against Olympia, because we as fans, we don't have to agree. I'm not saying you at home have to agree with that. You don't have to agree. That's your opinion. I'm saying, I'm predicting Moyes will feel justified if we beat Everton. He's prioritised the Everton game, clearly. Look at the team selection. Well, you better go do it. Because I remember him doing this in his first tenure here. I'm certain it was his first tenure. And I think I've got the games right. I know I've got the cup game. We went, I think it was quarterfinal, Carabao Cup, away to Arsenal. We put out our second string. I think Aaron Creswell played right back because we had two, and Max Wacker was left back. Got beat. We went Newcastle at the weekend. We're in a relegation battle at this point, so you get it. We played Newcastle and we didn't win. It was like, well, what's the point of resting them then? If you're going to rest them, you're going to throw a game, you've got to follow up with a win in the next game to justify what you've just done. And I feel like he lost the resting when in the 55th minute he was bringing Bowen, Antonio and Picato on. It felt like, well, they didn't get much of a rest anyway, did they? they you've almost lost that. But he has to follow up with a win. You said it's not season defining. I, I, whilst I agree on a one off, I do feel the next five league games are so, season defining yeah. for us. This is the start of it. Get a win here. Get a point away to Brentford and beat Olympiacos. And I know I'm missing out the Arsenal game, but we get seven points out of those three games, albeit different competitions. We're back on. We're back. We're yeah. back in the top six, seven. We're, we're back up on top of the. We stay top of Europa League. One foot in the next round. Hello, here we go. However, only get a point against Everton, lose against Brentford, and don't beat Olympiacos. And suddenly it's looking doom and gloom. So yeah. it's very, football's a very results based and it's very short term football. So we need to go out there and win on Sunday. Simple as that. Are you confident we will win? No, no, I, I think it's hard after winning, losing a couple of games to be confident. Um, I, I, I would hope we would. I would hope, but I, I am. I am not confident. I think we've got some bloody good players, Gia. I, I think if the players turn up, if, if Pakatar, we get Pakatar rather than Paqueta, uh, I, I think we've got a good chance of winning. I think if Bowen's, even just those, if those two players turn up on top form, they're going to cause Everton all sorts of problems. And that's just about saying, if, and, you know, will Prowse, if, will Prowse on the money and Alvarez on the, on the, you know, and doing at his best, I, I think I think we could I think we could win comfortably, but I, I'm not confident that that all those things will happen. Yeah, his team selection's got me a bit nervous because there's one force change at left back, and I'm not even sure I'm going to like what he does, regardless of what he does. If that makes sense, there's there's we've put Creswell in, but there's someone says to me, I think you're wrong. Here's why you don't even have to tell me. Here's why I already know why you don't want to see Creswell left back. I get it. You have to convince me that Creswell's not an alternative. I know he's not. It's the the best of a bad bunch almost to who's going to come in for Emerson. Yeah. But to, to, this is like I said before, to, when you I say, are you confident? This is where you go into predicting what Moyes will do subconsciously. And you've got to have confidence in what he's going to do in order to have confidence. You're going to yield the result from the game. And that's where I'm, I'm following down a little bit today because I'm not that confident he's going to get it spot on against this Everton side. What that is, I do not know. I've given what I want to see. You give what you want to see at home. We can win. Uh, we should win. Will we? Don't know. There's just too many players out of form at the minute. And I feel like he could, in theory, rip up his game plan and start again a little bit. Not completely. You know, Alvarez will start, Ward Powers will start, Bowen will start, Paquette will start, Ariola will start. That's fine. But Emerson's going to be a big loss. Yeah, Emerson's huge. Uh, for the way that we play, the way that we attack... Emerson's become a very important player and arguably our best player this season. He's missing. Huge loss. Any final words in your score prediction? No, not really. But uh, look, they'll be... It's funny. I think a more confident team and a team in, in a better moment... Um, I don't know why I just used that word. Um, would uh, the Everton would be scenting blood here i really do but possibly just quite possibly they've got enough problems of their own at the moment they might not totally capitalize on it but i'm pretty sure that sean dyer should be telling those players forget about the, the point stuff forget about the takeover stuff and they've got a couple of um they might not be able to play a full put a full team out themselves as, as we alluded to earlier as well put all that stuff to one side i bet he's turned around and said i've been here before i've been to this stadium before when things ain't completely peachy and it got a little bit tasty. So um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he says, go out, go out there and um, and we can get something in this game. So I don't think it's going to be easy. Um, I think it might be 2-2. Two, two. 
Oh, I was hoping you were going to go for a win, actually. I, I, I was going to say 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go one all for this one. I, I'm just not... Why were you hoping I was going to say a win, but you were going to do the draw? Because people are just going to tell us we'll be negative, although it's just our honest opinions. Do you know what I mean? It's Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, negative. Predict a win. You must predict a win regardless of everything that you've said. You have to predict a win. Um, you know, people said we credited Villa too much and, you know, we got beat 4-1, so I would argue we were correct, but... Oh, yeah, give the, give the comments a swerve on this one. It's just our honest thoughts. I'm going to say 1-1. Uh, what do you want me to do? Lie? All right, 4-0 West Ham, then. I think uh, Caduce is going to start up front and get a trick. <laughs> I don't believe it, but there you go. Hopefully that'll satisfy the... I don't call you Positive Pete for nothing. Well, you can call me whatever you want. I don't really care. Anyway, if you want your Christmas jumper that looks like this or last year's design, go to hammerschatstore.com. Link in description. Get pre-ordered. It'll be with you by mid-December. Obviously, we'll endeavour to get to your ASAP, but it is a pre-order because we've only got very limited stock. Financial reasons, cash flow. We don't have loads of money. Um, so we, you pre-order, we use your money to go and buy the stock and then post it out to you. It's yeah, we, we got financial that. fair play with the with the Hammers yeah. Chat shop, you see. We can't spend too much. We're only allowed to lose one hundred and five pounds over a three year that's, period. That's right. I mean, we've many done of, that. Uh, <laughs> we've definitely done that on the um conference league winners t shirt. That's on right. that printing that's error. A beauty. It's a beauty. We lost a few hundred quid on those ones. Anyway, if you enjoyed this preview, please do drop a like on subscribe to your damage chat. Myself and Gonzo, I'll catch you in a bit. Ooh.